Thanks for staying with us. So September is Sepsis <coughs> Awareness Month. According to reports, every two minutes, someone dies from sepsis. Mm -hmm. And that is more than from prostate cancer. Breast wow. cancer and, <coughs> ads and AIDS combined. Join us on the show is a pediatrician and the CEO Outreach Women and Children Hospital, Dr. Ifumbu Dosekun. Welcome, madam. Are you there? Good morning. I'm here. Good to have you on the show. Good morning. For those who don't have an idea what sepsis is, could you tell us what it is and how can somebody, um, how can it be diagnosed? Mm -hmm. Sepsis. This is a very interesting phenomenon. And it's a phenomenon that many people are not aware about. Oh. And there's an international drive in different platforms and modalities where they are trying to make people understand what sepsis is. Sepsis just means an infection, but it is an infection with a difference. Hmm. Now, sepsis is an infection with an exaggerated immune response. Hmm. Means instead of your immune system to come and gently hit the bug and kill the bug, the immune system overreacts, it kills the bug, and it, in its overdue, may kill the subject that is invaded by a bug. Wow. When we were in school, when I was in medical school 40 years ago, this was not the explanation given to us about sepsis. The main thing said that sepsis is when you have bacteria in your blood to a significant amount, it causes sepsis, and it was well-known knowledge that it will cause death. But now we are understanding what we call the pathophysiology, pathology and the physiology of sepsis better. That sepsis is not only a bacterial infection, it is any bug. It can be the malaria parasite, Ooh. it can be bacteria, it can be a virus, it can be, it can be uh, um, um, a protozoa, like amoebiasis. There are many agents that can give rise to sepsis. But of course, the commonest one is bacteria. Okay. okay. So when, when I was on the, in the hospital f with my son's pregnancy, I used to see the doctors come ar run around when the pa a patient is brought in and they claim the patient has sepsis. Everybody's running, they kind of exaggerate the situation. And then after a few weeks of treatment, I see the person gets better. So initially, the impression is that this is so out of point, no, nothing can, you know. So what, how exactly should we treat this? Is this something that we should be very, very scared about or something that, you know, is controllable that, you know, you can just go to the hospital for? We, sh we should be on the alert. That's the word. Doctors, nurses, lab scientists, pharmacists, patients, the whole community should be aware that when we have an infection, sometimes we're lucky. It can just stay within the organ in which that pathogen, that's what I'm calling that bug, with which it enters the body. And it may cause you no problem. Just maybe a bit of discomfort, a bit of a fever, a bit of pain from your body reacting to it by causing inflammation. So the body's immune system can surmount it, and that's the end. Sometimes you need to use drugs that would help you to finally kick off that bug and stop this um, invasion. Or sometimes what happens is that there are some particular situations. It may be dependent on how strong that bug is, but I've had an exposure to a nasty bug. Or... It may be that you have some underlying problems in, in your body that is making you susceptible to having a bad infection, be like some diabetes or, or you are immunosuppressants or you have some particular disease that is, or you have HIV. So you have some particular disease that uh, you, have, you are malnourished, you are not been eating well or not eating the right type of food or um, so, if you are now exposed, if it's either the environment or the bug that comes, allows this exposure, what then happens is that your immune system, when it sees this bug, there's an exaggerated response. So 
like maybe if you have a bug in your body and there's a call for 1 million white blood cells, this one will now be exaggerated and you have 10 million white blood cells. Right. So it is the activated mm. white blood cells that are, that are trying to attack this bug that now starts the damage that is called sepsis. Right. Okay. Because what does... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, man. Now that we know that any bug can actually cause this uh, sepsis, is there any way yes. we can prevent it from happening at all? Is there anything anyone can use as a, me a preventive measure so that you don't even have sepsis at all? Is it possible? I don't think it is possible because even if you think about COVID, COVID can cause sepsis. Malaria can cause sepsis. Herpes, a cold sore, can move on and become a sepsis. A bacteria, staphylococcus, can cause sepsis. Wow. And these things can just be in the air. It might be who you are in contact with. You can go to the market or a crowded space and have a contact. You can have a cut, and the cut, there's an exposure to some dirt. That dirt is that very bad bug. You can be in a hospital where the hospital is colonized with a bug, and you there are exposed to it. So the important thing is to make, ensure that your immune system is intact. Take the vaccination that you are supposed to take to support your, to stimulate your immune system or to make you readiness to fight specific bugs. And do the simple things that encourage good health, like have adequate sleep for like eight hours. Um, your personal hygiene must be very good, otherwise you'll be prone to having staph sepsis. So you must make sure that you have your bath at least daily with a good quality soap. Um, try to make sure you drink your water is safe. Make sure your food, particularly your vegetables, there's a drive now for us to be more healthy, right. eating more vegetables, uh, more foods. Right. But we must remember that they can be contaminated by manure or by dirt. So we must remember, we must wash our food properly. Oh, our fruits and vegetables, and we must cook our meat or fish properly. Right. Okay. So that right. it reduces these factors. Right. And generally, just be a happier person because stress and happiness reduces the effectiveness of the immune system. Right. Mm. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Are there specific symptoms that we can be alerted to just in case? I think one of the first ones is tiredness. That's the very first one that starts. You are tired. Then after that, you can now have a fever. But this is usually a high-grade fever in most age groups. In the elderly people, there is no fever. It creeps onto them and kills them. Hmm. So if you have an elderly person that is more quiet, you feel the hands. The hands are cold. The feet are cold. They complain that they are not feeling right. With adults, they actually visualize. They say, I just feel so bad within me. You have chills, you're passing less urine, you don't feel like eating, you have a bitter taste in your mouth, and they might actually be the uh, manifestation of, of illness in a specific place. Maybe like you have cellulitis, swollen and red hand, or you have a bad tonsillitis, because it could start off it's as something. a specific infection in an organ. It can now spread and become sepsis, which is all the body that is inflamed. Maybe. And when all the body is inflamed, the, the nasty chemicals that come out with sepsis makes your blood vessels dilate. So your blood flow to all your organs is disturbed. And once you don't have blood flow to all your organs, you start producing acid in your body. If I throw acid on your face, your face will be scarred. It's the same thing with your body. Your body is now scarred and parts of your body is knocking off. All right, let me, let me, take, this, let me take this call from Michael. We have a call. Good morning, Michael from Asaba. Go ahead, please. Good morning. morning. Good morning. Yeah, uh, I'm Michael. I'm calling from uh, Asaba. I'm a first-time caller. Welcome, Welcome to, to the show. show. Thank you. Uh, the thing is, I just had the doctor. There's a question, Mariah, you, you ask the doctor concerning uh, if someone is attacked, is it an attack on an individual? How can that particular person uh, regain consciousness? The way he actually answered it, I was a bit uh, not satisfied with it. Okay. You know why? He talk, he's talking about the uh, aspirin, which is not supposed to be. What he's supposed to 
stay is to assist the individual at home is to do CPR, cardiac Which pulmonary resuscitation, by doing compression. Instead of calling the number, we at home can assist our people at home. Instead of calling the doctor right. or calling the nurses, the best thing is to clock your hand and start pressing the check right. and like giving CPR. Thank you very much. He did mention that. The doctor did mention that afterwards. But uh, Minima, let me ask you your question. Go ahead, please. Okay, so um, when you explain sepsis, I wondered how... Is, if it's possible to have it in newborns, you know, babies that yeah. you know. Yeah. Yes, we can have sepsis in new newborns because they can be exposed to pathogens either from inside when the baby, the fetus is still in the uterus, when it's moving out in the birth canal, and when it is born from the environment, from people's touch, from people's coughing on the baby, from putting creams and um, herbal concoctions of the umbilical stump, we can actually introduce um, bacteria most commonly into babies, mm. and that can give them sepsis, and they die very quickly from sepsis. Wow. It's, a, it's one of the four commonest causes of death in our newborn babies. And you know Nigeria has one of the highest unita mortality rate in the world. So we need to, and I think this has, the reason why it is so high, my personal belief, it has not been proven, is that we are very lackadaisic about fever in babies. Mm. We just, the mothers have been trained by the PHCs or by the, the um, community health workers to give ampiclox when mm. a baby has a fever, or they give it to them even as soon as they are born, which is wrong. Wow. Once a baby has a fever, a baby needs to go to a hospital and it needs to be given drugs in what they call a parenteral route, either through the muscle or through the vein. Oral medicines is too slow because mm. sepsis, the baby with sepsis deteriorates very fast. So it needs to be in a hospital. So we have to stop that local policy of giving oral drugs to our babies. What, what are the most affordable things? Because some people, some, most Nigerians in the remote areas of Nigeria can't afford a proper hospital. Yeah. And they put to bed every time. A lot of women have babies. What are some of the quickest things to make sure you do? Or, or, or herbal remedies. Or the lifestyle that you must have so that your baby uh, doesn't even have it in the first place? We, no, we have to understand. I understand what you're saying, that prevention is the best thing. Mm -hmm. We must try and make sure that our babies are clean. The umbilical stump is clean. Just soap and water is good enough to clean it. But if you are still anxious, some people put methylated spirits or chloroxidine gel. Now, we must make sure that people don't crowd around your baby and your baby and all her uh, um, beddings and clothes must be very clean. Those are the things, the little things we can do. When we are pregnant, we can make sure that we have good hygiene down there so that when the baby comes out, the baby is not exposed to, um, to bacteria. And um, abroad now, the test for urinary infection in the last four weeks of pregnancy is just a dipstick test. We will see whether the, the urine seems infected, in which case you have yeah. to treat the mother for Nima, Nima. it. As for for the good treatment, yeah, I agree with you that there is no care. Even in the primary health care center, they can give proper the right medicine for sepsis. They can give. WHO has done a study and they said that they're too common and inexpensive antibiotics that can be given in the primary health center through injection through the muscle. Mm -hmm. So nobody has an excuse to have a child with a fever and to self-medicate okay. or to give herbal concoctions. Perfect. There's high chance of that baby dying from sepsis. Right. And every baby is precious. Yeah. So we must really work hard All to right. save our baby. Thank you very much, Ma. I think at that we have to end this conversation. But thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Ma. We appreciate all that you've taught us this, this day. We've been speaking with the pediatrician and the CEO, Outreach Women and Children Hospital, Dr. Efumbo Dosekun. Thank you very much, Madam, for joining us. That's all we can take on the show today. Hope you learned as much as we did. Tomorrow is another day. Have a fabulous one. See you then. Bye for now. You can watch Your View on TVC every Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Nigerian time on DSTV channel 418, 
Gold TV Channel 27 and Channel 47, Star Times Channel 121 and Channel 307, Play TV Channel 801 and Channel 190, UHF 49, Sky Channel 515 for UK viewers. Watch live on Facebook at TVC Connect and on our website, tvcentertainment.tv forward slash livestream.